The Venus Project Team Speak Seminar, July 29, 2012. Hi, everyone. Hi, this is Jacques. We're going to have a short presentation on behavior and environment, about 15 minutes, and then we'll take questions. So, the interesting books on human behavior that you can get is John V. Watson, because he talks about the effects of environment on behavior. And so does B.F. Skinner. He talks a little bit about that. But they're also between the systems. They don't talk about the whole thing. So if you understand those things, if you can picture anything that environment... A guy told me he worked as a male nurse in a Jewish hospital, and when he walked outside, all he would hear is, Oy vey! Oy vey! Which means, oh, I'm in pain. He would hear Jewish expressions. When you walk in front of a Christian hospital, you'll hear other things. And in front of a Greek hospital, you'll hear different things. That's what I mean by environment. When a guy says, I'm a Greek, it means he's been influenced by being proud of being a Greek. He, he's, he's not saying he's proud of his conditioning, because he doesn't know what that means exactly. It means when you were in school, you said you're a Greek, and all the great thinkers in the past were Greeks. The great mathematicians that brought wonders to the world, he makes you feel proud of being a Greek. You could have been a, a, a criminal, a murderer, serial killer by the environment. A serial killer is one who gets satisfaction in killing a person, particularly people that they feel are putting him down. Now, a prostitute, if a guy finds out his mother was a prostitute, he may be so embittered that he just waits on the corner and kills prostitutes, because they're, they're evil people. You know, should not have done that. That's another type of moral training. So all your background comes to work when you're under stress. When you're under stress, you want to relieve that stress. So you shoot a prostitute, or you choke her, or you poison her, or you stab her, because she's bad. She's never bad. She's forced by her conditioning to that pattern of behavior. And in the Bible, it also says, there but for the grace of God go I. That means you could have been brought up under those circumstances. And it also tells you not to judge other people, which is better for your health, instead of judging and saying, well, that's the son of a bitch. I was real nice to him. I gave him a place to sleep, and he ran off with my wife and my furniture and my money. There's nothing wrong with the guy. There's something wrong with you. You're not a good judge of character. That's where the problem lies. The guy's conditioning came into fruition in your environment. He looked at you, instead of a nice person, he called you a sucker. I think it was Barnum, a Barnum and Bailey circus, and said, a sucker is born every minute. Well, a sucker is a person that does things and then is surprised by the results. If you take in a hungry person and feed him, it runs off with both your cameras, and you say, I can't afford to take in people. I'd like to, but I can't afford to, so I'll have to write those off as a loss or bad judgment. But if you take in people and they don't run off with your camera, then you feel, well, I guess I made a good judgment. Yeah. But if you make many good judgments in a row, you have to make a bad one. And if you make a bad one, that's called a learning process. You may become overly mean. Do you know what I mean by that? You don't take in anybody anymore, because you don't trust anybody. Trust means predictability. So a con man is a person who learns to say words that elicit maximum trust. I love you, I'm a good Christian, I believe in God, and I believe in doing right. He says, you're the kind of guy I want to have a member of our church. That's a con man is a guy that knows, that has learned through experience the best words and a con man is a guy that seduces many women, who says, you're pretty, you're beautiful, you mean more to me than anything in the world, 
this so flatters the woman, it's a form of hypnosis. But instead, if she watched the way he behaved and what he did, rather than what he said, both, you want both. That's the way you can tell. You have to observe behavior and words. And you have to remember that if your behavior is a little screwed up, so you have to allow for other people to have screw-ups in their behavior. You can't say, my behavior is perfectly clean, all other people are screwed up. You know, you share your values with them. You can study the individual and know what kind of environment they came from. One of great scarcity, one of abundance, that you can tell by their behavior. If a kid leaves half the food in a he's never known starvation or never lived in a land where there was a potato famine, you know, and people died of starvation. And every mother said, eat everything in your plate. Don't ever waste food. You never know. And it's against God to waste food. If you got a lot of that training, usually eat everything in your plate. Okay? Is that good or bad? I, mean, I can't evaluate that. I can just say that's the way the person was conditioned. Can you undo that? You can if you want to, if you know what to do. You always provide them with more food. Force children to eat. Kids are on full. Eat more. Then they always resent eating because you always say, you eat everything that I put out there. Or tell the kid, they say, how much food do you want? When you're putting it out, get to stop there and say, then you can say you can eat everything because you're the one that ordered that. But if you put a whole bunch of food in front of a kid, you, you set the stage for trouble. If you want a kid to have a good appetite and eat well, always put a little less than they ask for. It's kind of, kids are going to have more of that. Do you understand? You manipulate the variables in the environment. So it's always the environment, the schools, the lectures you go to, the books you read, the television shows, the medical experiences always environment. I know of no case of a human being coming up with all kinds of ideas without environment. Environment doesn't mean school always. Experience it means. Your parents, your friends, what they did. If a person changes their environment, let's say they lived in Israel till they were 14 or 13, then they moved to Germany, lived there till they were 25, their conditioning is a little more German than it is Israeli. It's assuming they worked there and married there and settled there. So if you lived in the South Seas for 20 years, but you only lived in society till you were 11 years old, your parents moved to the South Seas, you'd have a combination way of thinking between the formal of Paris, wherever you were raised, to the time you spent in the new environment. But if you spent most time with your parents, it did not associate with the natives because you thought they were inferior. You may not learn anything from them. Are you sharp on environment? Any questions about environment? Do you want to talk at all about a more optimal environment? That's A more optimal environment teaches kids about the effects of environment on behavior and not to judge other people, except modify their behavior, if you know how. And then go in behavioral modification, how that's done. So the kids of the future, I would say, would know roughly how to go about raising a kid to be less of a problem. Like I tried to condition my wife not to go into the bedroom when the kid made a lot of noise, when it was silent going into the bedroom. When I went, ah, ma, 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 don't go in anywhere. When it's quiet, then go in. Otherwise, the kid makes a lot of noise. Kids don't know anything. They just know that noise brings mommy in. No noise brings nobody in. And besides, I'm bored, so the kid makes a lot of noise. Otherwise, he finds something to do. And when you come in, that interrupts what he's doing. And you pick him up, he might cry, because whatever he was doing might be pleasant to him. There's so many films have to be made on children's behavior. And that's what kids watch in school. They watch the films and how these kids get to be a certain way. So they don't get mad at a kid. If you understand, if you put a match 
to straw, it burns. If you don't understand that, you got a problem. So we try to give the kids all kinds of physical reference only, not opinions. When you give an opinion, say, I'm going to speculate on something. I'm going to see if this holds true or not to this particular example. And say, when another kid says, well, is it so? The guy says, I didn't do the experiment yet. I don't know. That's the way kids will be in the future. They'll be great at saying, I don't know yet. I'll let you know in three or four days. So if you see him three or four days later, say, my Aunt Minnie was sick and the family had to go there, so I couldn't watch that film that you wanted me to watch. You know, so you don't control everybody to, to that extent where you know every minute of the day. You don't know when they got measles and couldn't go to school, didn't learn that certain thing. So again, if I tell you, if you find yourself judging other people, it means you're still steeped in the present day environment and influenced by it too much. And when you think about things, you tend to think the old way. We do tend to do that, go back to the old way. Instead of trying to think the new way, it's harder because it's new. That's why it's harder. Anything new is, is, takes more attention. So, what is the, what is called psychology will be be called behavioral sciences, meaning finding out what the facts are that shape behavior. And if your parents swear every time they drop something. The kid tends to do that. Isn't that amazing? Little kids, if you bring up a little boy, say a little girl, about six years old, with a very old grandmother, who says, we're going to church on Sunday. The child will speak like that. We're going to church on Sunday. So when you look back, you see a child instead of an older person. The child will talk like an older person but it won't walk like an older person. It'll do things like an older person. Say, oh my, there's so much dust in the house. Because the old person says that a lot. The child will say, oh my, there's so much dust in the house. And you say, well, that's strange. It is rare, but it does happen. The older language is, the more thalamic it is, meaning more emotional rather than based on information. The modern language is computer language. That's, and computers will eventually learn how to talk to one another with a minimum amount of effort. And they will teach people a better way of doing things. Because the computer can't afford a sunny day in May. Especially if you're running machines. One machine doesn't say, how are your ball bearings doing? And it doesn't, well, if if you asked me that Saturday, I wouldn't give you a right answer. He says, can you change ball bearings? No. And leave the subject alone. You understand, the machine can't afford to take on how your grandmother will walk. Or who invented you? It doesn't matter to machines. Nothing matters to machines except the way you program. That's why they tend not to better themselves, but they could be programmed to improve themselves. Well, when a machine improves itself, it doesn't say, I'm improving myself, I feel good. It can't do that. It can just improve itself. But can a machine be created with a survival instinct, like people and animals have? A machine can be created to avoid fire and back away. It could be avoid a precipice. Now, you say, gee, it has self-preservation. That's your projection. A machine can be designed so when it gets near the edge of a table, it stops. It scans, but it doesn't say, if I go off, then I'm going to break into 50 pieces, and it's going to hurt for several days. No machine ever experienced pain, but it could be conditioned to stop. You can make a robot, and you can tell the robot that your grandfather was just killed in a plane crash, and the angle of the eyebrows will change. You say, oh my, how awful, but it won't feel anything. It's just an automatic response, just like the undertaker. If you've been an undertaker for 40 years, the guy said, my brother-in-law was killed. He said, it's very depressing. But he doesn't feel as much as the average person. 
I was supposed to say, brother Norman, you know, a funeral director, where he every day, he has 45 people a day that are dead and ready for embalming. So he doesn't feel sad at everybody he buries. He may move, right? He may say, that's a horrible experience. I can imagine how much you suffered losing your first wife after three weeks of marriage. He may even say it better than another person. But that's because of 50 deaths a day. The bigger the funeral home, the less identification with sadness. And if you sell wedding gowns, you're going to say, congratulations, may your wedding last, may your we wedding last forever. You know what I mean? What do you say? The average wedding lasts five years today. So you order a gown for, for an hour, but remember that. But they say, what are you, negative person? You terrible person. You know, they don't, people don't say, well, John is different, you know. So you have to think about these things. You have to toss them around in your head to fill your head with differences from the way you were brought up. But you must share it with your friends. If you don't, you lose them. Well, that's essentially what I've got to say about human behavior. Again, I repeat, it's the environment, more so than studying the individual, unless you're an expert on environmental experiences. Okay, is having a social life in this system a nothing thing? In the system, people believe it's a something thing. But it depends on what you mean by a social life. You have to lay it out more so. Somebody's asking about if they can have an update regarding the film script. We will better be able to tell you within a week or two. We are going to see the first draft from the script writer that we commissioned. So we will know. We're very anxious to see how it's going at this time. So we'll know hopefully within a week or two. During the construction phase of the first city, won't it be better to begin with the design and construction of the automated construction equipment rather than stick building, stick building, I'm not sure what they're talking about, the first city, then use them to build the city? I'm not exactly sure what they're asking, but the first city, we've talked about it, we wouldn't really do tremendous, an automated city or work on the construction and the jigs for automation, we would build it with what there is today. And we would use that first city as a research center to design and construct the automation systems for the next city to make it more efficient, make them more prefabricated so we can several cities at once after that and forever improving on those. Somebody's asking, what's the update on the motion picture and who's the screenwriter? Going to wait until we really know that the screenwriter's working out, and then we'd be glad to tell you. For the new 70s lectures being put up in the shop next week, can they be purchased as MP3s? I'll talk to Joel about that. Joel is working on those. We will probably do that because we've had other requests for that as well. We're on the third one, almost finished with that. If somebody was brought up in a society where a certain emotion, let's say anger, was not present and the person had a brain tumor, would it be possible for him or her to have a reaction such as anger if they've never been exposed to anger? Well, that's environment. That's a physiological environment. Yes, you can react to a physiological environment. Environment is anything that happens to a person. The food they eat, the lack of vitamins they have can affect your behavior. So somebody can get angry. Anything acting on a yeah. person. In your opinion, did too many people get caught up in the physiological aspect of the Venus Project, then preventing them from partaking in the activism aspect? Yes, sometimes that is a factor. Sometimes it is not, but you have to be very careful before you draw a judgment on why a person does certain things. 
How long were you doing therapy sessions on the boat? And did you help people significantly? Oh, yes, I turned them around completely. So they had entirely different reactions than they would have had ordinarily. That's true to most people that I've seen that have come to sessions with shock oh, over tours. or over a long period of time, especially. Yeah, from the, the tours in the 70s and 80s. When the transition begins, what continent culture do you see as being most resistant? Early traditional concepts, such as religion, a set of values that promote the existence of a monetary system are very hard to outgrow, but they can be outgrown if you think about it. If you're exposed to our tours or our lectures on behavior, you're apt to ask more questions. How do we use art and media to influence people's values, behaviors, and actions? By illustrating. In other words, if you talk about some aspect of technology, for example, on a front view of an airplane, looking at an airplane from the front, the wings seem to go from the bottom of the plane, if it's a low wing, and have an upward tilt. It's called dihedral. That stabilizes the system and lowers the center of gravity. But if you don't know the purpose of all these little differences on airplanes, you can't have any way of looking at it. You have to go to school and study airplanes or look in a book that informs you about the nature of aircraft. And that goes for all subjects, chemistry, logic, mathematics. The more you know about it, that is a physical reference for it, the more you understand. By showing them things that are essential to the subject matter they're inquiring about. That's how you use art and media. Yes, you have people. to show them how it's used and what the advantages are, and what happens if you don't use it. Does a resource-based system eliminate desire of power, and how? You start out by having youngsters work and cooperate. In other words, if you try to build an object by yourself, like an automobile, with very little information, you're going to have problems. And if you work with an associate that knows a lot about cars, you can build a better car. The chances are your car will be better than one you put up yourself if you don't have enough information. And the more people you work with with information, the better the system. Well, I don't know what power means. You don't want to control people. You want to ask them questions. And if they have answers, you can use them. Well, if they have answers you don't understand, you can further inquire as to what they mean by that. Now, there would be no place for wanting to boss and throw someone around. That would be previous conditioning. Because you seek cooperation, not supervision over other people, unless they ask you to supervise their behavior or observe their behavior and tell you what the shortcomings are or you tell them what their shortcomings are. It's usually lack of information. Jacques, taking into account your age, you will at some stage have to retire from active involvement with the project. When do you envision your retirement? <laughs> when I can no longer serve usefully. Also, if you become senile or suffer dementia, is there someone with the right to retire you? I can't answer those questions until it happens. If I feel that I'm losing my facilitation, I will probably automatically bow out. What are your thoughts on Richard Dawkins? Well, he goes pretty far, but he doesn't cover or integrate the whole system. I don't know if he really talks about a social system, mainly just religion. Well, if he doesn't talk about the system, I don't know what he's talking about. 
You talk about not needing prisons anymore. How would you deal with psychopaths currently in prison or alleviate you know, mental psychopath imbalance? Psychopath belongs in a hospital, not a prison. Right. It says, how do you alleviate mental imbalance due to genetic issues? We do the best we can. If we cannot eliminate it, they're hospitalized and treated as best we know how at the time. Is there any reason to actually own anything in a resource-based economy when we would simply borrow anything we need from a library-type system? Yes, that's true. Yet there wouldn't be any need to own anything. Unless you do that work as a constant, then you would have a lab which is at your exposure to investigate anything you want to investigate. If you need to work with a microscope all day long, or all week long, or all month long, it is there for your use. Why did you stop taking an interest in your children? I can't answer that. My children, when they were well enough informed, they can carry out a function. If they were not, I had to work on them constantly so they were able to carry out a function. I never lost interest in them. Yeah, I don't know what the question is, unless you're talking about way back in, I guess it was the 50s or something, the judge always assigned the kids to the mother. It's changing more so now yes. with joint custody, but back then it was very restrictive. It's very difficult to raise children between many different systems. It may even be harmful. Jacques, did you have any friends in the 20s which shared the same values as you? Did you have a social life? Yes, I had a social life, but we didn't share the same values. If we read a book that we felt was enlightening, we would recommend it to one another to enhance the facilitation of everyone. The 20s, would that be with Jack Catron and Eli, and you had a lot of... Well, not completely, but we would share whatever values we were able to share at the time. Don't forget, knowledge is cumulative, and in time you learn more, and you learn how to do things better than you did in the past, and so it's ever-changing. There's no fixed set of how to build a house, or how to design a computer, or how to design anything. It's always growing and changing, if you're brought up with the appropriate information. And you know your own shortcomings, you know where to look for information. This person is asking if this statement is true. During the transition, many of the cities, buildings, energy projects, etc., will have to be funded and after the Venus Project gains more land and resources, they will be able to construct things without using money, and instead using the resources that they have available. That's pretty accurate, yes. Do you have any announcements that you'd like to make? No, nothing new right now. You know, we mentioned we're going to Russia last time and to Bosnia, and the information's on our website. Yes, and to England. So, not right now. We're busy working on a short version of Paradise or Oblivion to show in Russia, and been busy working on my lecture, and Andrew is going to be presenting in Russia as well, if everything goes through with his visa. And so he's been working on that when he has any spare time. But nothing else to report right now. Well, thank you for your attendance. We appreciate that. Well, we can open the mic if anybody wants to ask questions. Yes. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rastan, I have one question. Sure. Sometimes it seems that even if a person has relevant information, they can have problems with processing this information for their benefits. For example, smoking doctors, they study 
detrimental of the smoking. They can see people every time who has the uh, effects of it, but they have problems, but they're still smoking. Can you please elaborate on that, on the mechanism, why they still not apply this information to themselves? Sorry, I was they just... They really don't appreciate that yet until the smoking begins to affect their behavior or gives them pain. Most people don't recognize that until they're in the middle of it. Isn't also relevant information really not conditioning That's all right. the time? Conditioning is uh, what you've been brought up to believe, and that isn't always relevant to your behavior. If you're brought up believing that you have free will, you say, well, I'll tend to that later. You don't know enough about the habits and how to break them and how to interfere with habits that you enjoy and you wish to pull out of those habits. You have to practice just like you have to practice tennis or golf to become better at it. You practice it. The same with logic and reason. If you don't have enough background in it, it's very hard to be reasonable. So how do you can suggest to work with that? Is it going to be better if I can find out the immediate benefits or immediate detrimental effects it can point it out to the person, not, for example, the doctor, maybe if somebody else? Well, only if that person asks you about it. If the person says, what do you think of my value system? Then you can point it out, it's better. But to just move in and attack people for what they believe is really inconsiderate. If you feel you're giving them information, it's No, still... they have to ask for it. What do you think of my value system? What do you think of my approach? Then they're asking. But if you just examine another person on your own and tell them what you think is their shortcomings, they're really not ready for modification unless they ask you. It's usually resentment. The people that come here to tours ask all kinds of questions because they're concerned about it. But they don't ask to argue, they ask to understand. Thank you very much. Hi, Jocks uh, and Roxanne. It's very nice to meet you. My name is Greg and I'm from Pennsylvania. And my question is Do you think the United States is the best place for you to be? carrying out the Venus Project? Not necessarily. Any nation that wants to build the first experimental city would be okay with us, anywhere in the world. If the materials are available there, it would be the right place. Thank you. Will you be doing any presentations when you come over to England? No, we don't have anything scheduled, but we might be doing a TV internet show. I will get you that information probably next week if that goes through. Thank you. What day do you be going to England then? We are leaving on the 27th. We'll be there for five days, leaving on the 31st for Bosnia. I mean, we're probably open for a lecture or some kind of meeting, but we just didn't schedule it. Here's a question from the audience. Jacques, what role will you take during the first city design? Sort of an overseer, making recommendations for the city design and knowing how many people the facilities can support I would have to know a great deal to tell you more. See, people say, what will the city look like? It depends. They want a city for 10,000, 1 million people, they would all differ. So if I give you any description, it wouldn't be probably what will occur. What will occur is when they tell me, can you design a city for 10,000 people as an experimental center and with so much facilities that the roads exist, to get to that city and the fabricators are nearby, I'd have to know all that. How far are the generating plants? 
Do we have photoelectric cells available in the area? Not having any of that information, it's very hard for me to give you an idea of what the first city would be like. Mainly advisor and guardian of the general direction. Yeah, and designer. I know of no other architect that designs as comprehensively so everything works together efficiently concerning I might resources. Train young architectural students in the design process for making prefabricated cities, production centers, design centers, transportation systems. I would work on the youngsters or students. That would be much better. Whenever we went to different countries where they wanted to hear about Jacques' cities and possibly do a city, Jacques always wanted to engage the university students there in working with it so they'd understand that process of design. That's true. Normally in architecture, we hardly talk about moving parts. That's mostly it's fixed structures and, uh, you know, but what Jack talks about in some of his lectures or in some of the videos of the Venus Project, the concept of self-erecting structures and, you know, the other industrial design structures, basically the construction equipments, the machinery and the basically the automated robots that are involved in the construction process. All these require much more than just uh, fixed structures. They require moving parts and automation and a lot of other programming and things like that. So how do you get about going beyond the concept of today's architecture and, you know, mix the knowledge that you have from a general point of view and bring it into your design perspective? Design. Just like any new subject, you have to instruct the students in why you do things a certain way and how they can learn how to do it that way. You have to take over and show them how, if they're not familiar with it. And you include many interdisciplinary teams oh, yeah. too. It's not many. just architects no, designing not just architects. the city it's system. Electrical engineers, power systems, elevator, transportation operations built in the city. Everything that the city requires will have to be understood. So people have maximum advantage living in that city. So understand that every city is a different project. And every city that you advance and design can be improved. Things are in constant change. There's no utopias, no final frontiers. Things always undergo modification towards simplification and conservation of resources. In any disciplines, they're always updated to the latest technologies as time goes on, though. Yes. Same thing with architects. Yes. They would have to incorporate latest technologies. You're right, Roxanne. But when you deal with a lot of different people, like today, it might be just one doctor if you have a problem, but in the future, it would be many doctors looking at your case and in many different fields oh, yes. to find the best approach. That's true. The best approach at a given time. Right. Thanks a lot. That really helps a lot. Sure. Thank you. Here's another question from the audience. Jacques, are there people that you trust right now who you think can fulfill your designs? There are many people that I trust today that can help point out the direction to be taken. He's talking about your designs as well. Yes. Yeah. I know that. Okay. Okay, then. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Thank you very much. And keep up the questions. Yeah. And thanks for all your help. Yes. For those who are helping out there. We hope to see you next week. Thanks to you guys.